Hello and welcome. I'm Fernando, a GP in the UK. Today we will go through the new guideline on diagnosing, monitoring and managing chronic asthma, focusing on what is relevant in primary care only. Given how extensive the guidance is, in this episode we'll just focus on treating asthma in children aged 5 to 11 and those under 5. If you haven't already, I recommend checking out the previous two episodes on this subject covering initial assessment and diagnosis and asthma treatment in patients aged 12 and over. In the next episode, we will finish the guideline by covering asthma monitoring, general treatment principles and management in special groups. So stay tuned for this. Right, let's jump into it. As you probably know, the new guideline is a joint initiative by NICE, the British Thoracic Society, or BTS, and the Scottish Intercollegiate Guidelines Network, or SIGN. It replaces previous guidance, and you'll find a link to it in the episode description. As we're going to look at the pharmacological management, it is worthwhile remembering that, from a treatment perspective, there are three groups of patients those aged 12 and over, those aged 5 to 11, and those aged under 5. NICE has produced summaries of the pharmacological management in the various age groups, and a link to them can be found in the episode description. And today, we're going to focus on the pharmacological management in children, so we will start with those aged 5 to 11. You may be aware that short-acting beta-2 agonists, or SABAs, have disappeared from the management of patients aged 12 and over. But in children under 12, SABAs have certainly a role to play. So let's have a look at it. And as initial management in children aged 5 to 11 with newly diagnosed asthma, we will offer twice-daily pediatric low-dose inhaled corticosteroids with a short-acting beta-2 agonist or SABA as needed. By the way, for guidance on what pediatric doses of inhaled corticosteroids are considered low, moderate and high, NICE, SIGN and BTS have produced tables showing the various inhaled corticosteroids under different doses that you can refer to. You can find a link to these tables in the episode description. Now, what do we do after this? That is, if asthma is not controlled with this regimen of a low-dose inhaled corticosteroid plus a SABA on demand? In this age group, there are two pathways, the MART pathway and the conventional pathway. Let's look at the MART pathway first, remembering that MART stands for Maintenance and Reliever Therapy. Here, we will consider pediatric low-dose MART when asthma is not controlled on pediatric low-dose inhaled corticosteroid plus a SABA on demand, as long as they are assessed to have the ability to manage a MART regimen. The current evidence supporting the use of MART in children aged 5 to 11 is based on the use of a dry powder inhaler. Then, if asthma is not controlled on a pediatric low-dose MART, we will consider increasing to pediatric moderate dose MART. Alternatively, the conventional pathway is needed when children are assessed as being unable to manage the MART regimen. Here, we would consider adding a leukotriene receptor antagonist to the twice daily pediatric low dose inhaled corticosteroid plus the SABA on demand when asthma symptoms are not controlled. We will give the leukotriene receptor antagonist for a trial period of 8 to 12 weeks, then stop if it is ineffective. And we will follow the MHRA advice on the risk of neuropsychiatric reactions in people taking Montelukast. Then, if the asthma symptoms are not controlled on a pediatric low dose inhaled corticosteroid plus a SABA on demand, with or without a leukotriene receptor antagonist, depending on previous response, we will offer a twice-daily pediatric low-dose inhaled corticosteroid LABA combination inhaler plus a SABA on demand. Then, if asthma symptoms are not controlled on a pediatric low-dose inhaled corticosteroid LABA combination plus SABA on demand, we will offer twice-daily pediatric moderate-dose inhaled corticosteroid LABA inhaler combination plus the SABA on demand. Again, 
with or without a leukotriene receptor antagonist, depending on previous response. In summary, the conventional pathway recommends that we try both a leukotriene receptor antagonist and a LABA before increasing the inhaled corticosteroid to a pediatric moderate dose. In other words, the only time that we will prescribe a moderate dose inhaled corticosteroid to children aged 5 to 11 will be alongside a LABA, either with or without a leukotriene receptor antagonist, depending on the case. But how do we decide whether to use a MART regimen or a conventional pathway? We need to start by saying that the guideline specifically supports the use of the MART regimen for children under 12 are less assessed as being unable to manage it. This is to address concerns that younger children may have difficulty understanding the MART regimen, which can lead to confusion about when to take the inhaler for maintenance versus symptom relief. This may lead to confusion between maintenance and reliever doses, potentially leading to inconsistent dosing and both overuse or underuse of the inhaler. But how do we make this assessment? Well, the decision to use MART should be based on factors like the child's ability to understand the regimen and use the inhaler correctly, the risk of overuse or underuse, and the overall safety and suitability for the individual child. Why do we mention safety? Well, we need to be aware that most of the robust studies on MART have been conducted in adults or adolescents, that is, 12 years and older. And there is limited evidence to support the safety and effectiveness of MART for children under 12. And there's also a licensing reality, because at the time of publishing this guideline and releasing this episode, no asthma inhalers were licensed for MART in children under 12, so this would be an off-label use. Although off-label prescribing is permissible in the UK when it's based on sound clinical judgment and informed consent, this approach requires careful consideration and clear communication with parents or guardians, and we will have to be comfortable with it. Despite these considerations, and in one sentence, the take-home message is that NICE recommends MART for children under 12, provided that they're deemed suitable using our clinical judgment. And regardless of the pathway that we have chosen, if the asthma is not controlled on a pediatric moderate dose MART, or pediatric moderate dose inhaled corticosteroid LABA combination maintenance therapy, with or without a leukotriene receptor antagonist, we will refer them to a specialist. In other words, we will not prescribe high doses of inhaled corticosteroids to children aged 5 to 11 without seeking specialist advice first. Let's now look at the pharmacological management in children under 5. And these recommendations are for children under 5 with both newly suspected or confirmed asthma or with asthma symptoms that are uncontrolled on the current treatment. So, if there are symptoms that indicate the need for maintenance therapy, for example, interval symptoms in children with another atopic disorder, or if there are severe acute episodes of difficulty breathing and wheeze, for example, requiring hospital admission or needing two or more courses of oral corticosteroids, then the first step is to consider an 8 to 12 week trial of twice daily pediatric low-dose inhaled corticosteroid as maintenance therapy, with a short-acting beta-2 agonist or SABA for reliever therapy. If symptoms do not resolve during the trial period, we will check the inhaler technique and adherence to treatment, possible environmental sources of their symptoms, for example, mold in home, cold housing, smokers or indoor air pollution, and we will check possible alternative diagnoses. And if we cannot explain the poor response to treatment, we will refer to a specialist. This means that we will not increase the inhaled corticosteroid to a moderate dose if there has not been a good initial response to a low dose first. However, if symptoms are resolved, we will consider stopping treatment after 8 to 12 weeks and then review the symptoms after a further 3 months. 
then if symptoms resolve during the trial period, but then symptoms recur by the three-month review, or the child has an acute episode requiring systemic corticosteroids or hospitalization, we will restart regular inhaled corticosteroids beginning at the pediatric low dose, but here we will be able to titrate up to a pediatric moderate dose if needed, also with the SABA on demand. When symptoms settle, we will consider a further trial without treatment after reviewing the child within 12 months. If symptoms are not controlled on a pediatric moderate dose of an inhaled corticosteroid with a SABA on demand as needed, we will consider a leukotriene receptor antagonist in addition to the inhaled corticosteroid. We will give the leukotriene receptor antagonist for a trial period of 8 to 12 weeks and we will then stop if it is ineffective. If symptoms remain uncontrolled on a pediatric moderate dose of inhaled corticosteroid as maintenance and a trial of leukotriene receptor antagonist has been unsuccessful or not tolerated, we will stop the leukotriene receptor antagonist and refer the child to a specialist for further investigations and management. On the other hand, if asthma symptoms are completely controlled, we may want to consider decreasing maintenance therapy. In this case, at annual review, we will discuss the risks and benefits of decreasing their maintenance therapy. And we will update their asthma action plan and arrange self-monitoring and follow-up. When decreasing maintenance therapy, we will stop or reduce the dose of medicines in an order that takes into account the clinical effectiveness when they were first introduced, as well as their side effects and the patient's preference. We will allow at least 8 to 12 weeks before considering a further treatment reduction. So that is it, a review of the treatment of asthma in patients aged under 12. We have come to the end of this episode. Remember that this is not medical advice, but only my summary and my interpretation of the guidelines. You must always use your clinical judgment. Thank you for watching and goodbye.